So, yeah, I do believe that Alpha Investments has lost a lot of money and this has kind of caused him to be unhinged. You know, this is probably the worst time to have a magic collection, a, a valuable magic collection in the history of magic. Number one, the reserve list. I've gone on into great detail about that. But for me, let me just kind of wrap my head around this is I've always used something called a buy list and the buy list can be Card Kingdom, it can be Star City Games, it can be Channel Fireball, now owned by eBay or TCG Player. It could be TCG Player. They have their own buy list as well of all these stores combined of whoever and then they make a profit from that buy list. And my rationale, David Adams again has a buy list as well. Every big store has a buy list or should, ABU Games, and I could just go on and on. I have never seen a time where a buy list halves itself in 90 days. That is very concerning to me because I've always believed that if you buy a collection or you buy something, I always do over buy list. My buy list is higher than every buy list online because I give you five or 10% more. Sometimes you can split the shipping. Sometimes I pay the shipping. It really depends on my mood. There's not any, I will match the buy list and I will give you a percentage over the buy list most times. It, it really, number one, depends on what the collection is. If it's a higher end collection. So if there's a lot of valuable cards, there's a lot of valuable cards. Oh, Cool Stuff Inc. has a good buy list too. Now that I remember the last buy list I was doing. Then if there's very few cards, but they're all worth a bunch of money, then I will give you a big premium because it's easy for me. Now, if you're selling a bunch of cards, let's say a thousand cards and they're all worth between two to $10, <laughs> that does not sound too fun to me. You know, so I, I don't know, like it's one of these things. And, and also if it's modern, if it's standard versus the vintage and the conditioning. So typically speaking, most cards, most collections I buy will have a premium over and if the shipping is a big deal sometimes for like let's say sealed boxes we'll split the shipping or i will pay for the shipping i'm very flexible with uh, how that happens i had to say no to the buy list and it hurts my soul it just hurts me so much but that's where we are right now we are in the worst timeline for a magic collector including rudy chan all Rudy Chan's videos is pallets of boxes. You know, now that I have a sealed investment of my own going, mostly boxes from Rudy Chan, from you know his subscriber, his Patreon, I have come to a realization that sealed box collecting is not a fun hobby. And it is not something that you can do. I'd much rather have singles and so on and put it in a small binder and put it in my, you know, bookshelf than have like infinite boxes, which has nowhere to go. And they're not even like fun to look at, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, they're always on sale on David Adams. It's, it's a bloodbath right now on Amazon. It's a bloodbath on David Adams. It's a bloodbath on multiple online vendors just trying to move their boxes at below cost and free shipping. So they're losing between 40% to 50% on the buy. In fact, I just got an order from uh, Amazon today of the Crimson Vow gift. That thing was $50 retail. They were selling it for like 20. It has eight set packs and one collector's pack and it's like a, a bundle. I was like, okay, so if the collector pack is $12, then like each booster is like a dollar, like each set booster Crimson Vow. And then, you know, at this price point, it just blows your mind, okay? The, the, the prices are so cheap that on Amazon and so cheap on Dave and Adams and you know, even eBay, I was, I was like bought bidding on stuff on eBay and it's like cheap as hell, man. Um, you gotta look at it and you gotta ask yourself the tough question, can this be sustainable? And the answer is no. So that's why Rudy Chan is so mad. Uh, I, I get it. You know, I, I'm past, you know, it's kind of the, the stages of grief. I don't know, eight or eight or 11 stages of grief. I'm, you know, the first stage is accept, you know, I'm at the point where I'm just not mad anymore. I'm just going to keep a trade binder. I'm going to put all these stuff in storage. I have the decorations up for my live stream set up. We'll open a shit ton of stuff just for fun uh, because it's cheap anyway. It's basically, it's like might as well set on fire. Uh, it is very disappointing. 
Um, I am sad, saddened by the fact that you know one of the core things I relied on, I cannot rely on anymore because it just collapsed overnight. Now, many of you say, "Well, what about that? What about no, 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 no." The buy list is the only you know sacred thing I thought was left in magic, right? Because in my opinion, smarter people, more people probably than me who do this for full time. I'm running a business with employees. I don't have time to calculate numbers, eBay comps and stuff like that. So when a buy list, I look at a buy list, I'm like, oh, the smart people are card kingdom, smart in the sense of like not IQ, but in the sense of magic knowledge of knowing what's going on, right? Because card kingdom is not going to get like destroyed from the buy list. They know what's going on and they can protect me. So if I buy card kingdom plus five, 10%, I should be okay. And that's no longer true. So that's where I am right now. I, I So to play this game, I needed a source of information that was readily accessible and easy for me to understand. And that was the buy list, okay? Uh, that source of information I no longer trust because I've been absolutely flayed and beaten to a pulp on buying buy list. People say, oh, buy list is so low. No, 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 no. What you don't understand is when you match any buy list, it's no longer low for any card because I'm offering the highest any store will pay you. Yes, could an individual who needs that card pay you more? Correct. But that individual is also not gonna buy your 900 random standard cards between two to $5, right? He's just gonna buy one card. Um, and this is my main selling point for my Pokemon distributors. And then you know I will buy a shit ton from you. Just do give me good prices. Uh, in fact, I have a new Pokemon distributor. Uh, I, so I have multiple distributors. And the Pokemon distributor says, oh yeah, you know, I tried to sell it like one, two, like, you know, I have a lot of rare Pokemon things because he just kind of loops it together and gives me a really good deal. In fact, um, I gotta like work with him sometime today. I've been ignoring him because of the holidays. <laughs> he sent me a, like a list. I can read you the list. I, I'm always very transparent with like what I'm buying because I don't care. You're not my competition, and you're if you take my distribute. I mean, there's no way my distributor goes with you over me because I buy in, you know, very large chunks. And again, I'm local, and that's what I, I find. I find like local business. I like it better than like buying shipping. Again. In today's society, yeah, you have to compete against everybody. It's just the way things are, right? Especially Amazon and Rudy Chan's. Uh, back to the reason I'm making this video. A lot of people are angry because they lost money. It's really that simple in my opinion. A lot of people were pretending, oh, I am so-and-so. I am uh, spiritually angry, <laughs> angry or something. I'm social justicely angry. They're just angry because they lost money. Like if you lose money, of course to get angry. Like why am I not angry? I used to be angry, but what can, what does that help? That doesn't help nothing. You know, I made these angry videos all the time. Like why, why would it matter? Like how does like me being upset at Wizard of the Coast help the problem? Nothing I can do will really affect Wizard of the Coast. Now people say vote with your wallet, hold the line. Those, when people say hold the line, they're the type of people who do not hold the line. Because if you're gonna hold a line, why would you need to say it so many times? You just kind of do it, right? It reminds me of, um, I think psychology wise, right? Like people who like say hold the line, like it's kind of like when you, um, let's say that there's a big protest against, uh, I don't know, I don't wanna be political, but protest against Qatar, right? And then, you know, the, the one, the, the, the armbands, right? The countries that are most vocal about this are the ones that are not going to wear the armbands. The people who are going to wear the armbands, they don't even talk about it. They just wear the armband and they go. If they, if they get kicked out, they get kicked out. They're willing to take the risk and because they're already mentally, they know this is what's right for them. Uh, and the countries that are always talking about, oh, talking about, talking about, talking about it. I mean, it, it's kind of like social justice. The more that you talk about social justice, the more I know that you don't do it. It's almost like volunteering. The more somebody talks about like volunteering, the more skeptical I become, especially if there's not like a physical location. This is just kind of like, oh, I've, you know, like there's like, when you volunteer in an animal shelter, there's like a dress that goes along with it. And there's like duties that you had to do. 
So it's like, huh, so tell me more about this volunteer experience that you have at the animal shelter. Oh, you know, there's a lot of dogs that walk. So when somebody tells you they, they volunteer at an animal shelter and they just walk dogs, and they're like my age or like, you know, a male, that is not what they do because that's not what you need done. Like you understand like walking dogs for like little kids. Like, you know, you, what you need, you need to clean the cages. That's very dirty, there's a lot of poop, you know, diary, I got, I mean, it's, it's, it's man, like it's on <laughs> your, your hands and your knees. It's, it's, it's just the grossest thing, man. But you gotta do it. Cause that's what they need to do. Hey, this dog got adopted. Cool. We gotta clean out the scent and stuff because maybe the dog gets again. You gotta pick up bags and bodies bags. I'll put it that way. Is there a heavy and uh, you, you, there's a lot of things you know that dogs do not want to do. Needles and you know gotta hold down the dog or it takes needle. That's not fun. There's fleas. There's ticks. You know. I mean, God. I mean, one time I came back home. And in a certain area, I was like, what the hell is, it was like a tick. I had to get like, seen for health reasons. <laughs> but no one ever talks about that. So when somebody tells me, oh, I, you know, hey, I volunteer at a dog shelter. Like, cool, cool, what do you do? Oh, I just, uh, I just walk dogs. I was like, walking dogs is the last thing that an animal shelter really needs. It's like the job that you give for kids, right? But if you're like a dog, and you volunteer in an animal shelter, you don't walk dogs, I tell you that much. So anyway, it's this social justice thing where they they take pictures of themselves walking dogs and supposedly this is very charitable. And it's like, Ugh. is that even like a dog from a shelter? Is that your neighbor's dog? <laughs> anyway, hi guys.